Welcome everyone to Indiana. It's the home of vast farmlands, steel mills, and the Indy 500. And it's the perfect place to take our favorite mid-sized sport quads that we all loved and cherished as a kid and compare them side by side to see who had the fastest four-wheeler on the block. Now well, these days, it may be hard to come by manufacturers that make brand new sport quads. Back in the day, from the mid 90s all the way up until about 2010, there were quite a few manufacturers making mid-sized sport quads that were perfect for kids who had outgrown their 90cc, but not quite ready for a 400 or a 450. Now yes, here at Top Quad, we're all adults and we're a little bit too big for these machines, but they've got more than enough power to lug us around and we thought it would be fun to relive some childhood memories and possibly create new ones that we were never able to make in the first place. We set up a series of five challenges and games and variations that you and your friends may have played when you were kids. When it comes to recreational sports, it's not always about serious statistics, but more about having a good time with your buddies, and that's just what we plan to do. Let's take a look at the machines. Now we've got four vastly different but very similar machines. We've got the Trailblazer here, we've got the Lakota, we've got the 300EX, we've got the Blaster. These are all mid-sized machines. I wanted to have an automatic machine, a semi-automatic machine, manual, that's a four-stroke, and then a fully manual two-stroke. So they're all mid-sized machines, but they all have something a little different, and I think that's gonna be really neat to compare because they're all gonna have their pros and cons, or maybe one of them is just gonna be way better. I, I don't know, what, what, what do you guys think? I'm still Team Honda on this one because this just doesn't. It's pretty. <laughs> it has a pull star. Mm. Yeah, but so does the Lakota. What is wrong with pull stars? We can go to the Lakota next if you'd like. Jacob says as soon as you see a machine with a pull start, you can just write it off immediately. That's not the primary. It's it's a backup starter. I mean, it has a like a regular start on it. It's not like that's. But why it's, it's have not a plan line B? More. Why have a plan B for your? It doesn't bother me. I could care less if they have pull starters on them. But it's kind of like a chick with a back tattoo. It gives you a certain opinion of somebody. What a, kind of opinion? <laughs> <laughs> What's up? I'm Mike Sabo. I'm really excited about the mid-sized quads. This is this. <laughs> this is great. I'm Mike Sabo, and this is Top Quad Three. This is one of the machines that I haven't had a chance to ride really at all. It could, it's, it could be fierce. These guys are telling me it's pretty fast. And uh, we got it dialed in today, and nobody's run it now that we've dialed it in, so it could be even faster. But uh, the suspension feels like it's just like not good. Yeah, she's got her problems. We got we got the Honda syndrome going on here, you know, a little floppiness. But I don't know. I'm Team Honda. I'm Jesse Brewer. Welcome to Top Quad Three. That's pretty good. That's wow. pretty good. I like that. Yeah. Say, Jesse Brewer. What, what's the what's the deal with the? Uh, this like rental jet ski thing up here. That's my favorite part. Like I, I, that's really. I think what it really is, is the, the 300 is so fast, they had to create some drag to help you keep the front end down. We do have the blaster down here as well. By far the smallest machine. And I think the size and weight of these machines is gonna play a huge factor too. So these are all mid-sized quads, you know, by like, I guess, definition, but they're all really totally different. The biggest thing with the blaster is like, when you look at it, it really looks like a kid's quad, especially compared to the Cool Ranch. We gotta put them next to each other and do like a side-by-side -side comparison. You can't even, when you get on this thing, you literally have to stand this wide. You, you cannot, it's a very, it's a very bulky machine. So not only is it an automatic, it's larger, but I think for, for leaning, it really, it holds you. I don't know. It, yeah, it's really it's it's gonna be one of those things where we're, we're just gonna have to find out. Yeah, I will say out of the lineup, I would say this is the easiest one to drive around. You drive yeah. it all day. Comfy. Yeah, super it's comfy. The we first win, the, the first win for comfort yes. goes to the, the Cool Ranch 250. I do have one concern though, and that's all this empty <laughs> space. Like, there's just nothing up here. The front end's gonna be so light. I don't know how I'm gonna like it on hill climbs. Any any jumping. Any, I mean, your, your front end is so light, and the turns, is it going to push really hard? I mean... I'm most excited about this four-wheeler. <laughs> Even if we think it's a dog and we don't really like it, I'm still stoked about it. I, I agree. Yeah. <laughs> I've been thinking about that. I think I told you on the phone, too. This one specifically, I don't even care if it's the worst performing. I just want to see how it stacks up. Mm -hmm. I'm really interested. I think it's got a victory in, in the cards. Mm -hmm. It might get last. It might get last on every other one, <laughs> but I think it's got one. I think I know the exact one that you're talking about. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jacob Brewer. <laughs> <laughs> you made me fall. Arguably, I would say the most 
well-rounded machine is going to be the Lakota. I really wanted to do the semi-clutch because I'm just interested to see like the advantages of one or the other because there's definitely something to be said for a semi-clutch. I mean, people do you know recluse clutches yep. and cross-country racing and stuff, but then you're losing the ability to pop your clutch and you yeah. lose a lot of control with that. But just overall, I feel like this machine is so... It's like stable across the board. Like if you're playing ATV off-road fury with the bars, yeah. this one would just be like even across the board. Yeah, Whereas the other ones are all over the place. You know, they may be faster or have better braking or whatever it is. This one's just like a solid go-to. And it's like specialty move is rev bombing in second gear. I'm at a loss with even picking one of these at all. As far as like, this one is for sure a standout. The blaster is awesome, but it's tiny. This thing is super stout. It's an awesome wheeler, and you don't see these when you go places either, so super limited experience. And the major downfall of that, I feel, is the trans, because you don't have a lot of control with operating it. Hey, everybody. I'm Pete Egger. Hi. I squeaked. Hi, I'm Pete. <laughs> I think it's really going to come down to each event, as far as, like, which one's gonna stand out. I don't think it's gonna be just a clear cut, this one is the winner, this one is the best. Yeah, I agree. I think we've got a lot of different theories here. I say we all hop on these things and get a little bit of seat time and uh, see what they feel like. All right, the machines are locked in. Now to avoid any confusion, you may have noticed that we gave these machines nicknames. The Yamaha Blaster is the original crispy chicken sandwich. The 300EX is the meatball. Kawasaki Lakota is the blueberry milkshake. And the Polaris Trailblazer is the cool ranch. All of these machines have comparable specs across the board. Every machine is mostly stock, at least to the best of our knowledge. We fitted each machine with brand new Kenda tires. And every machine here has an aftermarket exhaust with the option of an intake and modified airbox lid. The Blaster will have no airbox lid. The 300EX has a modified lid. The Trailblazer will also have no lid. The Lakota is the only machine that has no modifications to the intake. We did weigh these machines after filling them up with fluids. The Blaster came in at 334 pounds, by far the lightest. The Honda 300EX, 397 pounds. Then the Kawasaki Lakota, 468 pounds. And the heaviest machine of the bunch is the Trailblazer at 487 pounds. Damn. All right, let's go to the field and see how these things drive. Jacob, Jacob, what did it weigh? Huh? What a a lot. <laughs> For real though. Really, I don't know. I think it was like close to 500 pounds. Are you serious? Alrighty guys, we're getting warmed up. We're gonna do a little run around on the Cool Ranch 250. It's a Polaris 250 Trailblazer. Automatic, threw it in high gear, boys. I've never ridden an automatic two-stroke. Definitely a different feeling. draw the trailblazer it's really large sounds like a dying goat and has a pull start this one's actually cool because it's too smoke and it's a uh, belt drive everyone hates it because it sounds like a leaf blower i'm not totally against this thing it may have a chance this this is one of those where it builds speed and you don't realize it until you're there i feel pretty confident with this one i kind of like it i want to ride that you want to switch yeah. real fast <laughs> I'm still looking for a shift there. And Yeah. 
if we can get the SC1 off of this seat, <laughs> if you can make it so that you don't slip, you can you can do really good. On all those corners, it started like pulling me over. This yeah. is so slippery. Dude, this honestly might get first. Whoa. <laughs> because it's so easy and you can literally almost full throttle it the whole time. And you fit on it. And I think it has a safety thing too. Do you guys hear in the air? Yeah. It has like a shut off or something. It's so weird. There's nothing here. It's a fake clutch right here. <laughs> My feet are so far apart. And I'm really not feeling the automatic, so the trailblazer's going to the bottom. It's weird. It's very weird. This is slippery. Like, I can't find this brake ever. So I just use this one. But it grabs the front too and then you're like... Jesse, what'd you think of the seat? I like it. Were you slipping? Oh. Yeah, but I got a lot more meat. I probably I probably wiped all the SC1 off with my ass. Ah! So much more room on this thing. <laughs> Ah, I see the bog he's talking about now. Oh, this thing's not bad. It's very comfortable to ride. Ah. The automatic on the Trailblazer is super odd because you're like waiting to do your next input as a rider. Whereas like even if you're just going on a straight line on other quads, you're listening to your RPMs, you're feeling the machine, you got to upshift. Trailblazer, you just wait. Could be six seconds and then we're going to do the next move. The other machines you're actively riding. So the automatic trans is nice in certain situations, but it's less rider involved. And I, like everybody else, had kind of written off the Trailblazer. I saw Pete ride the Blazer around and it was just not impressive. I think it's gonna get last. <laughs> Man, this thing has a learning curve. A lot on this thing. It's so yeah, and I, I didn't have to work that hard. This is the easiest one to ride, without a doubt. Trailblazer, dark horse. Polaris Trailblazer 250, arguably the most odd vehicle of our bunch. Its frame geometry and footprint is that of the size of a full-size ATV. So at least for us adults, we'll probably feel most at home on this machine. They were made from 1990 all the way up until 2006, and they've got a 244cc air-cooled two-stroke engine. But what's weird about the Trailblazer is that it's mated to a CVT automatic transmission. On most sport quads this size, you'll find a semi-auto or a manual transmission. This one is definitely odd. The Trailblazer requires the least amount of rider input, pretty much just the thumb throttle, the brake, and go. After reviewing a lot of comments up to this series, this is definitely viewed as the underdog. However, I think the size factor is going to play a large part. We also noticed that out of these machines, it has by far the most plush suspension, and it's actually pretty easy to handle. The wheelbase is pretty wide. It's gonna need it though, because all of the riders noticed that out of these machines, it had the least amount of power and worst throttle response. The automatic transmission may be easy to use, but it takes a lot of control away from the rider, and that could definitely slow things down. Now, if you're thinking about picking one of these up, they're very expensive you can pick them up even now for a thousand dollars or less in decent shape and they're very easy to maintain as well they've even got an oil injection system for the two-stroke engine that's pretty bulletproof as long as you keep it clean if you're looking for a mild machine to add to your collection one that anyone can ride but you can still have fun with a trailblazer 250 might be for you the question is how will it stack up against these other machines in our series of challenges I mean, hands down, there's only one of them that says top quad on it. The Lakota's got to be the best. The Lakota's sick. You know, we got to ride that already really hard. That's one of the machines that I got ready. Out of all of them, it's the most well-rounded. When you hit the throttle, you know what you're going to get. When you hit the brakes, you know what you're going to get. Very consistent machine. The auto clutch on the Lakota is really, I don't want to say it's weird, but it is. Mainly because I don't ride machines with that. It's very convenient at times, but then I feel like I'm out of my norm. I 
feel like my fat ass is gonna bend the plastics down though. That didn't sound healthy. <laughs> nice. The Lakota is a unit. It's a unit, but it's, it's kind of tiring to ride. I have the most confidence with it, but I think it's because I have the most seat time on it. Like, I've rode that a lot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's super predictable power too. You know what I just realized? Every time I shift, I've been doing this. <laughs> the Kawasaki Lakota 300. 290 cc's of four-stroke fury. Well, not exactly. The Lakota has a pretty mellow engine. It's a single overhead cam, air-cooled engine. It's very low tech, but it's known for its reliability. It's made it to a five-speed semi-automatic clutch, which means all you need to do is move the shift lever with your foot. There is no clutch action, and you don't have to worry about stalling out. Many people have never seen the Kawasaki Lakota, or they get it confused with its very similar brother, the Kawasaki Mojave. And without getting into details, aside from looks, the Mojave is actually quite different with an entirely different power plant, but that's for another video. The Kawasaki is a decent size and all of the riders notice that the suspension is pretty well rounded. In fact, the entire machine is pretty well rounded. The main complaint we all had is that it feels very utility oriented. And when you start to do any type of body positioning, you tend to just not fit. Kawasaki originally released the Lakota in 1995 and it was originally released with racks. Truly, this was a hybrid bridging the gap between sport and utility ATVs. The 2003 Lakota in this series does still have the hookups for racks. So if you do get racks on a later model Lakota, they can easily be upfitted to have them. The last year of production for the Lakota was 2003 and this is another machine that you can score relatively cheap. We picked up the one in this video for $1,800 and it was in phenomenal condition. But I've seen these things listed on Facebook Marketplace as low was 500 bucks in running condition. The Lakota really is a solid machine, but it doesn't have any one feature that seems to stand out amongst the rest. So it's gonna be interesting to see how it stacks up. We'll get right back to the machines, but first I wanna take a break to thank you for making it this far into the video. I'd also like to thank the companies that helped to make Top Quad possible. Thank you to PeteHager.com for parts, Rocket Rod Racing for suspension, Zoom Zoom for parts, DRW Performance for skid plates and case savers, Rocky Mountain ATV for parts, and we'd like to give a special thank you to Kenda for supplying tires for every one of these machines. Kenda tires are sweet. My least favorite thing about tires is when they bite in a power slide when you don't want them to, and that hasn't happened once. Definitely solid tires, and they look cool. I've always liked the tread patterns on them. Plus they put colored logos on the side of their tires, which is a big deal. Most companies don't do that. I'd also like to give a special thank you to Todd at 725 Designs. You'll notice that all of these machines have custom graphics on them. I made the designs, sent them to Todd, and he printed them out, making for an easy professional installation. The quality is top notch, and if you can't design your own graphics, that's no problem. Todd can do it for you. Check them out on Instagram at 725 Designs, and make sure to let them know that I sent you. All of the links to sponsor websites will be listed in the description below. If you're enjoying the video so far, liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing all help out a ton. We love making these videos, but it's a ton of work, and together the creators drive thousands of miles and work hundreds of hours to make this content for the off-road community. If you're looking for a way to support and help us, please consider subscribing to my friend's YouTube channels, Pete Hager, 700R Raptor Life, Brewer Off-Road, and of course, my YouTube channel. Tyrese from 700R Raptor Life wasn't able to make this year's show, but he did help out by supplying the meatball. You can also show your support by picking up some official Top Quad merch with your favorite machine on it. Links will be in the description below. Let's get back to the machines. Look how warmed out the front suspension is. You can see the tires all the time going blah, 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 blah. Yeah. yeah, that front left. We might lose that. So after watching Mike rip around bales in his front tire, do this, the posture of the machine, shake like it's on a boat. I'm excited to see how long it takes me to fall off of this. I'll tell you what, man. I was giving that thing the beans going over the jump every single time. Every time you go up, you can hear like the slack <laughs> coming out of everything. It's... Loose is fast. I'm going Honda 300DX. <laughs> God damn <laughs> <Lord. laughs> My right hand turns are horrible. I'm a Honda guy, so that's my thing. They're just reliable. 
If it's smoking, it's got oil. If it's leaking, it's got oil. I have a, another Honda that does the same damn thing. <laughs> what do you think of the 300? Um, definitely sketchy. I honestly feel like I'm riding the hardest on it, but I think I'm going the slowest. Some of these corners, I can go from second down into first or down into neutral on accident, like with the top of my foot or something. Kind of weird. I think because there's like no nerfs, no heel guards or something, you're like floating really weird. The high shifter, that's probably not helping it. Uh -uh. Yeah. The front left tire too looks like it's gonna fall off when he's riding because the suspension's just gone. It just it's like do it, it's doing some wonky stuff. dangerous <laughs> my knee almost went under here i guess like a, i don't know this is gonna take some getting used to it. i do not feel confident i feel like my feet are gonna slip off and like uh just everything when you, even like that like doing this it feels like there's no plastics oh uh, crap i've been meatball <laughs> meatball yeah I, I mean i like meatballs i think the meatball is going to come out better than everyone thinks everyone hates it it does smell like a waste oil heater when you're behind it. Meatballs can be slippery, I guess. You know, they pop out every once in a while, and so are the foot pegs. I think the meatball do okay. This machine's been ridden. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not saying it's clapped. It's been used. It's lived a hard life. I think all these guys are complaining a little bit too much about the meatball. It's just a clapped out quad. We all got them. I don't like it. <laughs> I think this is the least inspiring for sure. Like, everybody's gonna feel a little nervous on even like on the, um, just do it, trying to get around the hay bale, I'm afraid to full commit. I think I gotta ride it slow and then warm up to it a little bit. Yeah, I, like I just feel, da it feels dangerous. Yeah, I'm not going that fast, you'll be fine. You got a helmet on. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. Just bail. The Honda TRX 300EX. The 300EX belongs to a line of sport quads offered by Honda, starting with the TRX 90 all the way up to the 400EX. It was first offered in 1993 and remained mostly unchanged until 2007. In 2008, Honda updated the design of the Honda as well as changing the name to the TRX 300X. However, the 300X was very short-lived with the last model year being 2009. The 300EX is a super simple machine. It's run by a 282cc air-cooled four-stroke engine. It makes decent power and it's got a five-speed manual transmission with reverse. They run great, they're known for being reliable, and you can keep up with people on bigger quads like the 400EX. Now we did our best to keep the machines at a fairly even baseline. However, of the four machines here, this is the one that could probably use the most maintenance. It's definitely got its share of cosmetic defects, but the biggest detriment to its performance was definitely in the front end and specifically with the suspension. 300EX wasn't exactly known for its suspension even when they were brand new. However, this one is definitely whomped out. It's something that every rider noticed and pair that with the worn out foot pegs and the 300 is definitely coming in at a disadvantage. Now on a positive note for the 300EX, we did notice that it has an abnormal amount of power. While we don't have another 300EX here to compare to, it seems to have a substantial amount of power over the other machines. We have a 400EX here to compare to and it was pretty damn close. If I had to place a bet, I would guess that this has an aftermarket cam in it, but we didn't tear down the top end to look. So your guess is as good as ours. These are just things to keep in mind as you're watching the competition. Again, we wanted to have a baseline of mostly stock machines. However, when you're buying used, sometimes you're rolling the dice and you never really know what you're going to get. Will the power of the 300X overcome what it's lacking in suspension? Well, I guess we'll find out. The blaster! is a sick machine. My problem is if I can ride it. It's literally like smaller than me and I've tried to kind of maneuver around on it and I'm getting wedged in places to where I just can't move so I might get stuck on this thing. If you're riding the, the blaster really hard, I think that could potentially be the fastest quad in all the events. You just have to ride it just right. The blaster I think is just going to be like a, a workout. <laughs>
Until I saw the blaster in person, I was really thinking the blaster, but then I realized it's as small as like a full-on youth quad. The blaster is cool because you can actually pick different lines because it's so tiny. I'm really feeling the blaster. It's got a lot of power out of the hole. I think we'll be able to spin it around the bales the best, and it is definitely the nicest machine we have. You did better than I thought you would. So, I mean, the gears are short on that. I heard him grab fourth. Yeah. Like, it was like one, two, three, you really four. You gotta, I feel like you gotta wind him out though. Yeah, I did an early shift in third one time and it kind of bogged on me. I was like, dang it. But it's just getting used to it, I think. It's peppy. It's really peppy. I think the corners, it's gonna suffer though, dude. I don't know. If you get some warm up, I think you can make it do what it wants, but it's definitely harder. It's a lot more work for sure. That's what I was saying to Pete. I was like, that's the only machine, at least, so far from what I've written, but you gotta you gotta ride this machine. Oh yeah. You gotta yeah. know what like you gotta ride the hell out of it. Yeah, yeah. For sure. It's a lot of fun though. The Yamaha Blaster, classic two-stroke power. It has a 195cc air-cooled two-stroke engine mated to a six-speed manual transmission. These things have been around forever. In fact, Yamaha released them in 1988, and they were made all the way up until 2006. From 1988 until 2002, it had almost no changes, when in 2003, Yamaha updated the plastics, handlebars, and added hydraulic brakes, as the drum brakes on the older models were known for poor performance, and the back brake almost never works on any used one of these that you come across. The Blaster is a fairly reliable machine if it's left in its stock format, and they were known for having crazy colors over the years. In the comments that I read leading up to the competition, this is definitely the favored machine that most people think is going to win. And it's easy to see why after riding it. These things are an absolute blast to ride. And as long as you keep it in the power band, they're pretty damn quick. There's tons of these out there, and so many people have either had a friend with one of these, or they had one themselves when they were a kid. The Blaster is very small, light, and nimble, and the aftermarket selection for them is huge. Out of the box, the Blaster is a mild machine. They can easily be modified to put down some serious power. This one is all stock with the addition of an FMF exhaust and a removed airbox lid. Now, if you guys follow my channel, this was a complete restoration, so this machine is practically brand new. If you want to see this thing being built, there's an entire playlist where you can watch this machine being restored and customized. The Blaster is definitely quick, but we all noticed that it's significantly smaller in size than all of the other machines, and none of us fit on it. In fact, our knees were bumping up against the front fenders constantly. It also requires the most rider feedback in order to make it fast. If you don't have this thing in the power band, it's really not that quick. So it's gonna be a constant game of shifting and making sure the engine's in the right RPM in order to make this thing competitive. If you can do that though, this machine should be a force to be reckoned with. It'll be interesting to see how it stacks up. What do you guys think? You had enough seat time on them? 100%. I feel pretty good on them. 90%. 90%. <laughs> any final thoughts before we go into this first competition? Did I, did any of you guys have like a major change in, of opinion now that you've ridden them around? I kind of view that as like a sketchy roller coaster that's kind of fun. Just like, oh, we might die, but it's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, like the old wooden one. Just, just destroyed afterwards. Just <laughs> brutal, but it was still fun. Uh, excited to see everybody's reactions on the Trailblazer. And it even has surprised me. I think putting the new belt on it really helped it, you know, get up and go. So I think it's gonna do better than I thought. The 300DX, anybody's game. The blaster is so small. And then we've tore this up a bit, so you end up two-wheeling sometimes and you don't expect it. It's, yeah. it's, it's a crap shoot, I'm excited. Uh, I was definitely team Honda, and for me, my second choice was Lakota. Like, I definitely wanted one of those two quads. I kind of don't want either of those quads. I'll settle for the Lakota before the 300EX, but Cool Ranch is looking better and better every day. Yeah. <laughs> to go along with the theme, man, the Cool Ranch is going to be our Cinderella story. I think yeah. so. Even, I like the Lakota, though. I feel the most comfortable in the Lakota. We're talking about this course, too. I think this is like a heavy, heavily, uh, using a lot of body language on yeah. this course. We were saying, like, you don't have to shift, so you can fo all you have to focus on with that quad is your body position and throttle. Pretty much it, and brakes. But I mean, even that's easy. You have one option, basically. The back brake really doesn't work, <laughs> so. I don't know, man. Now we're gonna get into the first competition. We're doing the Monster Jam. This is a huge step up in top quad three. We've got a freaking sweet course set up here. We've got the, the straw bells, we've got everything. This is awesome. We've got a, we got a jump in the middle. We've got two symmetrical courses, but opposite. Both riders, we're gonna go in head to head at the same time. You go down the course, do your side, we cross, and then you do the opposite side. So everybody has the same amount of course that they're running, and it's gonna have a photo finish with a jump in the middle. It's gonna be an awesome, awesome course. Now, not only are these awesome courses, but we're throwing a twist in, and we are not bound to any one of these machines. So each rider is going to pick from a helmet. We've got keys on a lanyard, nobody knows what they're picking, and that's the machine that you're gonna ride. Each round, one of us will pick one lanyard, 
So we'll know that that one is eliminated and the remaining three riders will all pull at the same time. So I'm gonna start it off. Oh man. No meatballs, Shake no meatballs, no meatballs. So Fourth place and fourth place. Oh, <laughs> you can't write it off, man. What if it runs really good for the uh, Pete, you're so oh, optimistic. Damn. I love you, man. Okay. Right. Middle. I'm going middle. Oh, really? Here we go. The blast. Oh, hey, dude. The cool I got ranch. the blueberry. You guys all got lucky. <laughs> <laughs> this is bullshit, dude. Oh. Crispy chicken sandwich, all right. baby. Hell yeah. All right, we'll dude, take. what the f***? <laughs> Let's go ride. I was really looking at those lanyards too. I was like, there's, uh, that's, <laughs> that's gotta be the one. one. It was hanging the lowest. I, like, I, want it, but I, I should have known. Ace wrap. Damn. On the next episode of Top Wild. I just wanted more power. I could see it. I'm just pegged. Should I start it up that way this time? Oh! Oh! Hey, each other. Robin's racing, hey! baby! <laughs> for the next Top Quad series, we're gonna have a minimum price requirement for certain models. Like, <laughs> we're gonna look at the 300X market and say, all right, good ones are 1,800 and up, not 1,000. I know that I called the Cool Ranch the Cinderella story, but she could stay in the tower. <laughs> <laughs> Lost the seat! I'm seatless! Oh! So that'll suck on your butt if you sit on it. <laughs> rider to rider. What do you think after seeing that time? I think that those numbers are very different than numbers I had seen today. What's the weather look like out there, Ollie? Right? It's windy! So it is a lovely day. No, it's not. <laughs> it's not a lovely day. What's up in the Yo! Ah! Yo! <laughs> kind of do this. That's what the meatball does when you launch and the front end gets light. The tires are just going like this. Yeah, the whole front yeah, end is like a yeah. noodle. I think the Trailblazer can reel some people in here. Let's see how bad I lose this time. Oh, dude! <laughs> I mean, it wasn't an absolute bloodbath. What was that, like 10 lengths? <laughs> oh, yeah! <laughs> He's got to cool them balls off. He the wishes balls he had top. meatballs. Oh, he got some little blueberries. <laughs>